Hello, Cliff. Um, can you let us know who you are and where you come from? Sure. I, I'm Cliff Cosmo. I'm a computer science professor at Muhlenberg College, which is in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I'm also the CTO of a company called Elegance Technologies. We develop software products and we do some software consulting mostly but not entirely with open source. Okay. I have three questions for you. First of all, what's the big picture opportunity in connecting education and open source? For me, I think the big opportunity is, the, the big value for students is they get to see bigger projects, more realistic projects sooner. They, they're not, they don't have to wait until a capstone course and write what they think is a big project that's going to get thrown away. Early in the curriculum, they can be writing relatively small things that fit into a, a much bigger project. I think that's a great experience for them. Cool. Um, what specific projects or courses are you working on that make the link between open source and education? So, so the biggest course we do it in is our software engineering course where we use a set of open source tools then students start to study how those tools work to figure out what's really going on which, which is something they don't have a lot of experience with then they have to start making small additions you know, fixing bugs, adding little features then some of them start to actually build larger projects or larger pieces and others start to use those projects as leverage to do other tasks. They realize, wait a minute, here's a problem I thought was really hard. If I use an open source project, it becomes really easy. So it's the software engineering course and then the capstone project course. Probably half of the students end up doing open source. The other half do sort of more traditional research kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. Um, and the last question is, do you have any advice on how Mozilla could best engage with educators and students? Hmm. <laughs> I, I think a lot of it is about making it easy for people to get started in small ways and in finding ways for people to get excited about things. And I think a browser sounds really complicated to people. It's a rare student that's going to make a change to a browser. But plugins are, are pretty easy to write. I've, had, I've never written a Firefox plugin, but I have students that have done it without any help from me. Yeah. And, and I think they're even sort of plugin plugin examples. I'm thinking of like Grease Monkey, where it's a plugin for Firefox, and you can write very interesting, very useful things in 10 lines of code. And so that's a way that a student can write something, get it out where other people can see it, and suddenly they realize, wait, I'm now the expert on this, right? Exactly. <laughs> I didn't know what this was two weeks ago, and now suddenly I'm getting an email from people saying, gee, I really love the, the little script you wrote, but I wish you could do the next step. And so I think I think it's those sort of low barriers to entry to help people get started with this. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, please.